you, uh, Madam Speaker. This uh, question is about uh, the Great Council of Chiefs and ILO Convention 169. ILO Convention 169, like uh, UNCAT, we have just ratified, mandates and directs Fiji to protect its customary institutions as well as to consult. Should I remind the other side again of the ruling that was made by the Madam Speaker? Yeah, 30 seconds. We are entitled to make some points to clarify the question that comes later. Thank you. Carry on, uh, Honourable. <laughs> yeah, correct. You may carry on. Will the Honourable Prime Minister undertake to restore the Great Council of Chiefs by repealing the Itaukei Affairs Great Council of Chiefs revocation regulation that terminated its existence so as to fulfill Fiji's obligation on the ILO Convention 169. Thank you. The Honourable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I was uh, I just passed a comment to this uh, the leader of the government here because without people like him, the so-called Madi, there'll be no Great Council of Chiefs. <laughs> but Madam Speaker, I thank the I thank the honourable member for his question and for reminding us while the government has set its sights firmly on the future and the opportunities that await every region, including the university students sitting at the back there, the opposition keeps looking over its shoulders in the past. Whether it is the question of our national flag or the fate of the perpetrators of the 2000 coup, or indeed this question about the great council of chiefs, the opposition keeps raking over the coals desperately hoping to ignite some kind of controversy where none exists. Madam Speaker, I just want to, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Friday when we put the agenda together, I had a wonderful opportunity to ask you to get rid of this question. Because ILO does not re relate to the Great Council of Chiefs, does, nor does Great Council of Chiefs relate to the ILO. Everyone inside of this house understand that. Our lawyers, our lawyers, Madam Speaker, our lawyers, Madam Speaker, the practicing one, the practicing one, understand this. For some reason, that side of the house, except for that bit down there, <laughs> don't understand it. But let me give uh, the honorable member, including the university students, <laughs> let me give the honorable member a history lesson. And I love this opportunity. I love this opportunity, Madam Speaker, because uh, the university students are here. They can also listen in while I give the honorable member a history lesson. The Great Council of Chiefs was established in 1875 to, amongst other things, enforce the system of indirect rule which the British had implemented in other colonial territories it occupied. Okay. And indeed, when the Great Council of Chiefs. That's why Madam Speaker is sitting on that side of the house and we're here. But indeed, when the Great Council of Chiefs was established, it was called the Native Council. It was not called the Council of Chiefs or the Great Council of Chiefs. As with many other, as with many of our colonies in particular, where there was no standing British army, the colonial powers chose a handful of locals and created elitism by giving them the status and certain privileges 
which they did not enjoy previously and use them to rule the mess. This is not the time to go into a full history lesson because we really don't have the time, Madam Speaker. An unedited history lesson, but the point being in short, that the native council, you wait. This is the kind of opposition that we have in this country, Madam Speaker. The British created the Great Council of Chiefs at the whim, as can be seen from colonial records, and indeed, it's suspended by one of the governors. One of the governors had initially suspended the Great Council of Chiefs. It was not an indigenous institution. Formal legal recognition of the GCC, the formal legal recognition of the GCC was via colonial ordinances in the 1940s, which eventually became known as the Fijian Affairs Act. Then the 1970 constitution, the 1970 constitution gave powers to the GCC to select the number of members for the Senate. Further, the 1990 and the 1997 constitution gave powers to the GCC to make appointments to the Senate and appoint the President. These are historical facts that cannot be denied, denied no matter how hard the opposition tries. See, they have not been listening, Madam Speaker. That's a whole problem in this House. My government, my government, Madam Speaker, is committed to the ideals of a common and equal citizenry as prescribed by our Constitution. We are no longer, Madam Speaker, we are no longer a nation where accidents of birth elevate certain individuals above others. No more. We are all Fijians and we all enjoy equal access to our rights and privileges under the law. Very simple. Therefore, therefore, Madam Speaker, to put it simply, the answer to the Honorable Member's question is no. My government will not repeal the Itauke Affairs Act to bring back the Great Council of Chiefs. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. Supplementary question. Madam Speaker, wonderful history, albeit all wrong. <laughs> Let's just take that history further and bring it to current days, Madam Speaker. GCC is an apex body for the Itoke. Our friends from the South Indian community have the Sangam. Our, our Muslim people have the Fiji Muslim League. Our Chinese people have the Fiji Chinese community. Every community in Fiji has an apex body. Can I ask the Prime Minister, what is the apex body now for the Itoke community? Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I don't think the Honourable Member was listening to me. This is the apex body. Thank you. Thank you. What is the answer? What is the apex body for the Fiji? It's okay now, Madam Speaker. Where do we go to? Where, where do we go? We have the Sangam for the South, for the South Indians. We have the Mus Fiji Muslim League for the Muslim. We have no, no, no. the Sabah for, where, where are we? Where, where, where is the Itoke? Okay? Where, where is the apex body? Where is the apex body for the, for the where is it? You, you can remove something and not replace it. You, you can't just take it away. Please answer that. Where, where is the apex body? Thank you. 
Thank you. The question has been answered. There being no other supplementary question? Supplementary. Uh, Madam Speaker, before I start, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister took a snipe at me. Uh, but let me say, he committed treason. He's still here. He has, he has to account to that. Uh, excuse me. I uh, would like this you is the question. In the list, before, no, ILO 169. Before you ask the question, would you withdraw that statement? I withdraw that. Just made. Madam. Yes, I do. Thank you. But please. But please. The, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister says this has nothing to do with ILO 169. And let me quote to him Article 4. It says, special measures shall be adopted for safeguarding customary institutions. And the Great Council of Chiefs is customary uh, institutions. Uh, There's another also within ILO 169 requires prior and informed consent. Fijian, Fijian, this is my question. Did you, as a Fijian, as a Fijian, <laughs> as a Fijian, <laughs> did you as a Fijian, according to our tradition of Weba Katurang Ataki, consult, consult with the Great Council of Chiefs before you do this? Did you seek their views? Please do not ask questions directly, you ask through the chair. Did you seek their views, Madam Speaker? Me. Uh, the, the question is, did the Honorable Prime Minister, before terminating the GCC, seek their opinion or consulted with the Great Council of Chiefs? Thank you. And if not, why not? The Honorable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I think uh, the answer to that has been uh, relayed to the House when I answered uh, the first question by Tikola. Very simple. But it, uh, I note that uh, the member uh, related uh, his question when he first started off it was to the ILO Convention 169 Correct. and about custom rewrite. Uh, let, me, let, 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 me, let me elaborate on, on 169, which he keeps harping about, and which I said that the legal fraternity in this side of the house, the serving ones, understand. The rationale behind the ILO Convention 169, Madam Speaker, within this context, and visages indigenous people who have been marginalized completely from society. Wrong, totally wrong. Totally wrong. See? Yes. Within this context, and visages indigenous people who have been marginalized completely from society, whose lands have been arbitrarily and permanently alienated, whose cultures and traditions and way of life have been erased, or made almost extinct and indeed whose populations have been systematically killed off and marginalized. This is not the case in Fiji. I ask the members of the House, of the other side of the House, to read 169 and come up with the right interpretation of 169. My interpretation comes from the ESCOM. The uh, name of uh, the Honorable Attorney General has been mentioned. He, he is a serving lawyer, Madam Speaker. He doesn't practice. He to the focus. Some have not been. Let me again quote from uh, explanatory notes on the ILO website. This is the ILO website in relation to Convention 169. This has nothing to do with the Attorney General. Indigenous and tribal people's cultures and identities form an integral part of their lives. Correct. Their ways of life, Correct. customs, Correct. and traditions, Correct. institutions, yes. customary laws, yes. forms of land use, yes. and forms of social organization yes. are usually different from those of the dominant population. Yes. I'm quoting from the ILO website. You've all agreed to it. They've all agreed to it, Madam Speaker. <laughs> and at the end of the exercise, when I mentioned of the dominant population, they said, well, no. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, which is the dominant population in Fiji? Indeed, 
if we are to look at purely population numbers, Madam Speaker, the percentage of the vernacular language most widely spoken in ownership of land, then the Toke are the dominant population. I'm answering your question. Sit down. Thank you. Point of order. Point of order. Question. The point of order simply is, did he consult with the Great Council of Chiefs? If not, why not? He related his question to ILO. I'm trying to explain, Madam Speaker, to him the relevance of ILO and the Great Council of Chiefs. Very simple. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Do you have one last supplementary question? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Carmine. I, I, I must thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his answer to this question because the answer is no, that the, the GCC will not be reinstated. I am quite surprised, Madam Speaker, to hear the Honorable Prime Minister to say that the chiefs are born by accident. I, I, I just want the Prime Minister to reconfirm into this House whether that is really what he believes in, because I understand the Bible says that the chiefs are born from God. They are chiefs because it comes from God. Amen. And in this House, Amen. The Honourable Prime Minister has stated in his, in his, in his, in his answers Amen. that they are born by accident. The question is, is that Honourable Prime Minister the reason why you will not bring back the GCC because you believe they are born by accident? Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Madam Honourable Prime Minister. Quickly, uh, make a quick answer. Give a quick answer to them. Uh, the Honourable Member had said that uh, in the Bible, uh, I don't know which Bible he's quoting from, he says that the chiefs are from God. I would like to see, I would like to see, Madam Speaker, this Bible reading. Seriously. Seriously. Because in the Bible, it doesn't say chiefs. <laughs> what it means is leadership is from God. This is, this is, this is the interpretation that the Bible bashers are using to elevate the chiefs. So that they can uh, buy each other Sky TV. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that very vibrant uh, discussion on that uh, question.